What's going on guys? So today I actually had a wonderful day outside. Granted it was a little foggy, a little misty, but no heavy rains or anything. Brought in a nice cold front. It was in the 40s most of the day today, hence why I'm wearing the hoodie. So it got me thinking because there's something that came in within the last couple of days that I've been spraying on this hand pretty much every eight hours or so, doing a lot of testing with. That's leather dominant that we're going to feature in this video. It got me thinking, what's some of my favorite leather fragrances? Because as I start to get cooler and cooler weather, I'm getting the urge to start wearing these more heavy, buttery smooth leathers, these animalic leathers, and so on. So I got seven of my actual favorites. I want to talk to you about them. Stay tuned. Starting with the fragrance that sparked this video idea in the first place, shout outs to my man Chris. He sent me decant so many times over the years of me having this channel and I understand why my buddy Justin loves this fragrance so much. I will be getting a bottle sooner than later. This is going to be before I get some of those, like I plan on doing a fragrance haul here in the next month or so and this is definitely going to be in it. This is Gucci Guilty Absolute. So this was a full decant. I've been spraying it and spraying it. By the time I get a bottle, this decant will be empty. It's still on my hand from a few hours ago when I sprayed it. This came in like two days ago. I've just been spraying it. I've sprayed it probably five times since I got it in the last two days. Just single sprays on this hand. The hype is real on this one. I don't think it's as challenging as some people say. Now, it is overtly masculine. It's very dominant. It does have this aromatic green appeal, but it's very woody and leather dominant. Wood and leather. That's the main things you're going to get here. And it's, it's definitely on the more animalic side. It is a bolder take. It's a bold fragrance for being a designer fragrance. But I don't think it's actually that challenging. If you enjoy leather fragrances, this is something you need to experience. This is a must get your nose on, in my opinion. I'm very late to the party, obviously. Um, I wasn't always skeptical about it, but I've heard mixed things about it. I've heard it being challenging or extremely masculine or polarizing, and I'm sure it is polarizing for a lot of people, but like I said, if you like leather, this is one of the best leather fragrances I've ever smelled. This is amazing. I'm definitely going to be getting a bottle of this. Performance isn't ridiculously powerful, but it is pretty damn strong. I've been clocking it for around the eight-hour mark, eight to nine hours, uh, that's why I've been respraying once it becomes kind of a faint skin scent around that eight to nine hour mark. I've been throwing another spray on the next, this morning. It was still on my hand. I smelled it right when I woke up. It's just been an absolute joy to sniff on. I can't wait to get a full bottle. I'm getting the 90 ml. I'm not getting a 1.6 ounce. I'm getting a three ounce bottle because this stuff is absolutely amazing. The fragrance that started this video idea, Gucci Guilty Absolute. Next, this is one that my buddy... Jay over at Icon de Parfum sent me. He's been sending me a lot of these discontinued Ferrari fragrances. And this is a partial that's missing the cap, but that doesn't matter. It's amazing. It is Ferrari leather essence. This stuff is super, super, super good. It's a beautiful, warm, and spicy, leathery feel. Buttery soft. A little bit animalic. A little bit of an edge at the top, but it smooths over pretty quickly. It becomes more of a buttery soft type of leather, kind of like this color scheme would imply like some some dark brown leather seats in the Ferrari that yeah it it will give you that Italian leather type of smell think um think in the realm of cinnamon spice I don't remember the notes exactly but it kind of gives off this warm spicy cinnamon type of feel it might be peppers it, something like that but it's more of a warm and spicy feel it's got a very smooth ambery feel it's not real powdery or anything like that i don't get a ton of wood here there's a little bit of wood in the background but it's more about this buttery smooth leather like i said starts off rough and tumble not heavily rough and tumble but a little bit of an edge to it and then it's really smooth really fast this stuff's incredible it is well over a hundred bucks to get on ebay because they've been discontinued I don't know if I would sit here and say that it's definitely worth spending, say, 150 bucks on. That's up to you to decide. If you can secure a sample some kind of way, get your nose on it because this is one that I never thought would be as good as it actually is. I am 
absolutely blessed to have this in my collection now. Again, thank you, Jay, for sending this out. This is going to get a lot of wear from me in the upcoming fall and especially into the winter seasons because I like wearing heavy leather fragrances more in the winter months, but definitely a really good one. It's Ferrari Leather Essence. Next, this is pretty much my special occasion leather fragrance. The only time I wear this is when I have something special to go do and I'm in the mood for leather. So there's not a real big dent in this fragrance. I've only wore this fragrance maybe, maybe like six or seven times and I've had it, had it for like two years now. It's Argos, Baccio Immortel. Basically, a niche version of Tuscan leather. It's that raspberry fruity leather smell. This stuff is... Oh, top tier quality, juicy mouthwatering fruitiness at the top and ridiculously strong. When I was putting this video together a few hours ago, I gathered these fragrances. Um, I sprayed this in the air twice and for a solid like hour, hour and a half, it smelled like Baccio Immortel in this room, just from two random sprays in the air in the middle of the room on the other side of this desk. Absurdly powerful, ridiculously high quality. This stuff, it's so classy and elegant for a fruity leather fragrance. Like I said, there's other fragrances. It's a, think fragrances like Parfums de Marley Godolphin. Think Tom Ford Tuscan Leather. It's, it's part of that family of the fruity leather profile. They all have a little bit something different to offer from one another, but overall do the same job. The quality on this one is what separates it for me. This stuff is special. That's why I treat it as such. I wear it for very special occasions. In the cold weather, when I'm in the mood for leather, mainly my favorite fragrance to go to a wedding. This is a great wedding fragrance. It makes a statement. It's not too challenging, but it's very assertive at the same time. And it smells heavenly. This is really good stuff. Definitely worth trying from the house. This is technically my fourth favorite from the house. And the reason it's the fourth favorite is because I'm so situational with it. I don't wear it enough because my favorite is still Triumph of Bacchus, then Adonis Awakens and Donye, two of the newer releases. And then we slate Baccio Immortel right in there. But don't let that ranking make you think any less of it. Because like I said, it is my go-to for a wedding. Definitely get yourself a carded sample. If you like fruity leathers and you want kind of a top tier fruity leather, Check out Baccio Immortel from Argos. Next, I'm at the bottom of my decant. This is going to be part of that haul I was just speaking of. The next time I do a fragrance haul, it's going to involve this fragrance as well. It's been planned for a while. This is a decant of Tom Ford's Ombre Leather. As you can see, there's nothing left to it. I love this fragrance. This is... It's hard to say it's my favorite designer leather fragrance anymore now that I got Gucci Guilty Absolute. Um... I don't know, there's just so many good ones out there, and this one is phenomenal. It has a little bit of that sweetness to it, but no real heavy fruity sweetness like Baccio Immortel or the Big Brother Private Blend version of this, Tuscan Leather. Um, they don't smell exactly the same, but there is a lot of similarity. A little bit of a jasmine hit. It's got an ambery feel. This one's more smooth and buttery overall. Very masculine scent. Beautiful. This is more of something I would like to wear daily. Yeah, it dresses up pretty well, but I think... If you're into leather fragrances or it's just that cold outside, this will go nice with a, you know, a bomber jacket, even a hoodie if you really want to. Maybe a little too casual for this fragrance, but, you know, you can pull it off with whatever you, you want. Confidence is key. But this fragrance is incredible. This got hyped up for a very long time. Uh, it's been out since, I want to say, 2018. I could be wrong. Maybe 20, 2020 or 2018, one of those years. Anyways... I still haven't gotten a bottle yet. I do plan on getting one very soon, but this is definitely one of the best leather fragrances I've ever put my nose on, for sure. This is Tom Ford's Ombre Leather. Now, this is kind of that unicorn fragrance for me because I only wear it in the winter. So, literally, only when it's nice and cold outside and I'm in the mood for leather and iris do I wear this. One of the best fragrances ever created, in my opinion, Dior Homme Parfum. This is the older style 75 milliliter bottle. It's a beautiful dark colored juice. This is incredible. I have two of these bottles, so I'm set for, my, for a lifetime on this since I only wear it in the winter. This stuff's so good. <sighs> Beautiful, waxy, slightly creamy iris, animalic leather, a little hit of this tone of oud that adds to the animalic feel. There's a hit of rose here, a little bit of citrus at the top. I don't really get much of it, but mainly it transitions pretty drastically into a smooth, creamy sandalwood in the dry down. So a lot of these darker essences and darker nuances that you get at the top 
really settle down. It becomes a much more smooth and creamy fragrance overall as it dries. Performance is ridiculous. I've never done more than four sprays on this one because I don't need to. It's very loud and it's very long lasting. This is a freaking masterpiece in my opinion. Classified as a leather fragrance because it is leather forward iris. It's more leather than it is iris the way they balance this particular flanker. If you want the more sweet, the sweeter take on this, you go with Diorum Intense. If you want the more well balanced where you get a little bit of freshness, some sweetness, some leather, you get a little bit of all of it with the iris, you go with the original Diorum. If you want the fresher one, you used to be able to go with the Diorum O flanker and so on. This was always the deepest, darkest, densest of the group, not just because of the oil concentration, but because of the way they blended the fragrance and the notes used. Absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, one of the greatest fragrances ever made, in my personal opinion, Dior Homme Parfum. So these two fragrances are different enough to where its Parfum Flanker stands on its own and has a lot to offer different from the original. We're talking about Ombre Leather, but this time we're talking about Ombre Leather Parfum. It's another one that I still just have a decant of that I am just about out of that decant. This I will also be getting in that same fragrance hall. Here you get some iris and you get some violet leaf. So there's a little bit of a freshness to it. There's this ozonic appeal from the violet leaf, a soft powdery floral tone of iris, but still based around this beautifully smooth, luxurious leather smell. This is another one. I did a battle video between the two. I don't even remember which one I picked between this and ombre leather because I just enjoy both of them so much. They have so much in common and so much in differences between the two as well. I love the way they chose to go the route of making this Parfum Flanker from the original Ombre Leather because it's not too redundant to have the two together. You can wear them for different things. I find this one's a little bit more casual, whereas the original's a little bit dressier because this one has that freshness to it that's missing from the regular version of Ombre Leather. This is just beautiful. This is the newest release of these two. It came out this year, I believe, very beginning of this year, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, one I will be getting a bottle of in this ne next upcoming fragrance haul for sure, because another one that's just masterfully done. It suits my taste in so many ways, because I love Iris, no secret there, and I really enjoy leather as we move into these cooler months. And this is one of the best ones out there. Tom Ford Ombre Leather Parfum. Last but not least, this is one that is so ridiculously strong. Classic, classy, masculine. It's very situational for me, kind of like Baccio Immortel, where it just smells of the upper echelon of luxury that I only wear it in certain situations, and it's got to be cold outside because it's that strong. It's from Kajal Perfumes. This is called Solage. This stuff is special. When I say special, it's because... It creates a scent profile that's not really done or replicated anymore because there's a moderately heavy dose of carnation in here as its main floral attraction to kind of counterbalance that beautiful soft leather because it's not an extremely animalic type of leather. There's a light sweetness here. There's some other florals besides the carnation as well. There's some green elements to this. Obviously, there's a variety of wood. This is something, it's almost choking me from that one spray just being right here. It's so, so strong. There's a little bit of spicy, ambery spiciness to it. There is some complexity here. It does scream luxury. It is one of the more expensive fragrances in this video for sure, but you definitely get what you pay for here because most of the time when you're spending a lot on a fragrance, people want uniqueness, they want power, they want performance, and they want quality. And you're getting all of that from this juice as well as absolute top tier presentation with this frosted glass, these metal applied plates, this ninja throwing star full metal cap with all this architecture and detailing to it. It's just, it's a gorgeous fragrance. Again, I'm very situational, good and bad because it makes it that much more special when I wear it. But at the same time, I don't get to enjoy it enough because I'm so situational with it, but it begs me to dress it up. And I don't always have a dressy occasion I, more times than not, I have casual situations versus dressy occasions. So I don't wear it enough, but that doesn't take away from how amazing this is. And it's one of my favorite leather dominant fragrances. It's Kajal Perfumes Solage. Well, that's the seven that I have for you today. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. I do have more than seven. 
you know. This is just my seven absolute favorites, and three of them I still only have decants of. And thank you again to Chris for sending out Gucci Guilty Absolute. He also sent Rasasi Darej, as well as, I haven't even looked at this one yet, Frank Bucklet. I guess that's how you say it, Cocaine. Haven't tried that one yet either. Beautiful colored juices. He sent me these three decants, and I've just been enjoying Gucci Guilty Absolute so much. I said, why not? Let's talk about leather fragrances and some of my favorites and why. And there's variety here. There's some that I like to wear casually. There's some that are better for the evenings. There's some that are just straight up. I have a straight up wedding fragrance with Bachu and Martel, for example. Everybody's got their own little quirks, and this is mine when it comes to leather fragrances. Like I said, what's, what's some of your favorite leather fragrances that aren't necessarily any of my seven favorites? Definitely sound off in the comments. What's a leather dominant fragrance that is just your jam? You love that stuff. Love to read about it. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the seven that I really enjoy, you give them a spray now, pretty confident you'll thank me later because I find it difficult to believe anybody that likes leather fragrances wouldn't really enjoy these. Have a good one, guys.